This video is not sponsored, but I do have a really cool product that I want to tell you about at the end of the video. I bought two broken professional level camcorders to see if I could fix them, so let's do this. So this is a look at what we have. This is a Canon XC10. This is advertised as a professional level camcorder. Retail price is $1,600. I've never taken apart anything like this before, so this should be a real challenge. Now the good news is that we do have two of these. I can already tell what the problem is with this one. We have some sort of problem with the focus and I'm not sure what's going on with this one. So I'm gonna get a battery in and see what it does. Oh, we already got some screws out on this one. Can't really see them right down there. Let's see if this one turns on though. Okay, we've got power. Oh, here we go. Okay. So that seems to definitely be a problem. I can't see anything that's broken there. There must be something broken, but I don't know what it is. It doesn't look like this ring right here is broken. I'm not sure what holds that in, but so that's definitely one problem. Okay, autofocus actually works just fine. Can even see on here, the microphone is working as well. So, so far, I think everything works on this. I think maybe we just have a problem over here. Let's take a look at the other one and I'll show you what that one's doing. So the problem with this one is this zoom ring right here doesn't stay, it's, it's loose right here. It's got a little bit of play in it. It looks like the entire rest of the camera works, but this is definitely a problem. Every time it comes out or goes in, that's gonna mess up the focus and the zoom. Now I've never worked on any lenses or anything because they're very intimidating to me. And I know that I probably won't even be able to fix it, but fixing things until they're broken is sort of my specialty. So let's get it taken apart. So since I've never done anything like this before, gotta figure out what the best course of action is. And I think probably I just need to start taking things apart because I'm guessing once we get some of these outer pieces off, then we'll probably be able to get to some of the inner pieces. What I'm guessing is we have to get through all of these pieces to get to this lens. There's no way to get to just the lens itself that I can tell. These are not removable lenses. So I think I've got to take apart basically the entire thing to get to this lens and the zoom ring. So let's start with these bottom screws and see what kind of damage we can do. Okay. Okay, we have our first piece fully loose. Okay. There's a little ribbon cable right down there. We need to release. Oh, there's no locking tab. We just pull up on it. There we go. So next we need to get this little screw out over here. And this should come out. Got a little clip over this right here. So that is a start. So many little screws in this thing. Okay, well, we are getting there. I am not convinced I'll ever be able to get this back together, but I'll sure try. Okay, and I can see the start to our zoom ring, but we got a lot of work to do to get down to it. Just found this little pin that looks like it's been sheared off. So not sure if that has anything to do with our problem, but it could. and we are down to the board. But unfortunately, we have to go quite a bit past the board to get down to the lens. The lens is like the last stop on the train, but we're getting closer. And now it's time to remove a whole bunch of connectors, hopefully without breaking any. Whew. 
Wow, this is intense. So we got the motherboard out. Now we just gotta keep digging down here. This is crazy. I am definitely not confident I'll ever be able to get this back together, but let's keep going. So we're finally getting down to the good stuff. I don't really want to remove this part down here. I'm a little worried that this is part of it that is sealed up and shouldn't be opened. But at the same time, I have to get down to this lens and I'm just not sure that I can do it without opening this part up. I see a few screws. There's one here and one here, one over here that seem to screw down into this plastic. So I'm thinking I can all, I could almost take it off just with those, but I do have one screw down here that I don't think I can get to without removing more of this. So I think I'm gonna have to, even though I don't really wanna do it. So even though I don't want to, let's do it. Yep, and there we go. That's what I didn't want to take off, but oh well, looks like we had to do it. So now that this piece is off, I'm hoping I can get the rest of this metal frame off and then down to the lens. Okay, can we lift it off? Good so far, come on, yes. Okay, and there we have it. So we've got it down to just the lens. Let's take the next piece off. Okay, we finally have it off enough to look at this part. Unfortunately, this ribbon cable is connected here and connected down there. So unfortunately, even with that screw out, this just can't slip up here and this is soldered on down here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and desolder it from these three points right here. Okay, that should make it easier. Is that just missing a screw right here? Maybe, but if it is, then where's the screw? Let's take the rest of these screws off. I mean, hopefully that's what I'm supposed to do. I have no clue. Now, will it just come out? Oh, almost. So those pieces are just loose in there when that happens. So where is that other screw? So I think we definitely have found the problem. There's one, two, three places for a screw like this and the small piece that the screw screws into, but there's only two sets of these. I guess it could have fallen out of here, maybe when the focus was all the way out, maybe the screw could have fallen out there. So if that's the case, then the only way to fix this is to find another screw and another holder that slides in this groove right here. Unfortunately, these manufacturers don't sell parts like that. So I'm gonna have a look around online and see if I can find anything that might work, but this could be the end of the line if we can't find these two little tiny parts. I mean, these parts just cost what, a few cents each? And unfortunately right now, that is keeping me from fixing this $1,600 camera. Is that the piece right there? What? And also down in here, I found this. So down inside this outer lens, I found both of those pieces. Now I also did find this piece, which is a broken plastic piece. I'm not sure what it's for or where it goes, but that could also hinder our efforts of fixing this thing. But for now, let's put all of these pieces back in and see if we can get this lens back together. And as I was looking at the outer lens piece, I found more broken pieces. We got some sort of full circle white piece and then these black bits here. So I think the chances of this fixing this successfully are not good, but let's at least get these screws in and see if that fixes this problem with the lens that we were having.
Yep, and that definitely fixes the original problem we were having. We definitely fixed that part of it. I'm not sure if I should attempt to put this whole thing back together again, but what's it gonna hurt? We might as well give it a try and see what happens. Okay, so I did actually get this thing back together. Sometimes I even surprise myself. Let's get a battery put in it. Let's see if it turns on. Okay, here we go. Got a power light. Okay, charge the battery pack. Okay. Okay, the fan works. This all looks good so far. Let's try some autofocus. Okay, let's focus on this soldering machine right here. Okay, we got good focus there. Let's go way over here. Focused, focused, and that focus. So this thing actually is working pretty decent. So the zoom is the function that was working, but not working correctly before. Let's try zooming in here. There we go. So I would definitely call this one as fixed as I can get it. Now, as you saw, there were some little parts and pieces that fell out of the lens when I was fixing it. So unfortunately, it's not something that I would ever sell as a working camcorder, but it is something I might either use in my studio or I could even sell it as broken for parts or repair. This has a lot of good parts as the lens itself seems to be the only thing that might not be fully functional just because I found those pieces in it. Other than that, I think pretty much all the other parts and pieces on this camcorder are good. So that was a great practice round. Let's move on to the next one. And here we have the second XC10. This is the one where this whole side piece is very loose. It even just kind of like comes off right here. So now we got to take it apart far enough to see what's going on in there, and then we'll see if we can fix it. So now we're getting down a little bit closer, but I still can't tell why this is acting like this. Can't tell if there's something actually broken in there. I mean, there must be with how it is. So I think what maybe I can do is remove the screws from this bracket and this bracket, and then I think this whole piece just pulls off. Okay, got it. So I'm gonna try and take these screws out just in this black piece right here and see if we can just lift this off. I have a feeling I'll have to take off all of these black pieces around here, but I'm gonna try it anyways and just see if we happen to get lucky. Well, we've got three screws that have fallen out so far. And right down in there is the other screw. Ah, there we go. There's still another one. I don't know where that, oh, that's in the same area. There we go. Now I've gotten four screws out. One, two, three, four. So we gotta get those all screwed in. We gotta make sure this is all oriented correctly. That goes up there. And this, I believe, goes right here, like that. Okay, so we have that installed. The screws are nice and tight. Yep, that's not going anywhere. 
So now we have to try and get this thing all back together. Okay, so we got this piece all together. It all looks great. Now this metal frame piece is nice and solid. Now we gotta see if we can attach it back onto the camera, get all these brackets and connectors connected correctly. Okay, and there we go. No screws missing, amazingly. We actually got it back together. Now let's turn it on and see if this thing actually works. And here we go. Got a power light, good. Hear the fan. The battery error is just because I'm using like an aftermarket battery that doesn't really work that well. Okay, we got some autofocus. Let's see if that works. Definitely, it's got a nice quick autofocus. Okay, and the zoom works great. Nothing rattling around. Fan works great. So obviously there's a little more testing that needs to be done on this, but overall I think this one turned out really well. I'm really happy with this fix, and I'm pretty surprised I actually got one of these working because these are pretty intense. Now at the beginning of the video, I told you about a really cool product that was sent to me, so let me show you that now. This is a product made by Grid Studios, it's a Game Boy Pocket that's all taken apart and framed, and I really, really like it. Now this video is not sponsored by Grid, but they sent me this product and I thought it was something that was so cool that I wanted to show you guys. I am an affiliate for these products, so if you use the link down in the description, I will get a commission off of each sale. Now I don't know about you, but this brings back so many memories from when I was younger. I never actually had a Game Boy Pocket, but some of my friends had a Game Boy and I absolutely loved playing it. So just looking at this, it brings back all those great memories and I can just see how well this is gonna look hanging on my garage wall, or maybe even here in my YouTube studio. I've been impressed with Grid and their products from the moment I opened the box. They've got some amazing packaging and it makes for a really cool unboxing experience. Now here's another one that I'm just opening and seeing for the first time with you guys. It's the PSP 1000. Also another really cool handheld that I never owned until I started doing repairs. But it's so cool just to see these laid out so nicely and neatly and then everything is also labeled. I can guarantee you that this is gonna be something that's gonna catch people's eyes when they walk in. So once again, use my affiliate link in the description to go check out Grid Studios. They've got not only game consoles, they also have iPhones and several other devices as well. So thank you to Grid for sending this out to me. Thank you for watching my video today and I hope you have a good one.